Hey, we want to zero out that club face. We want to square it up at impact. Today, I'm going to show you how this single plane swing is the easiest way to square the face. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm gonna hit it well, I know I'm gonna play well, I know I'm gonna have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Hey, welcome to the channel today. So many times, as you know, I would have discussions with Mo on the range about his technique. I was curious. I was curious about how he was the most effective ball striker that I'd ever seen hit a golf ball. But what that comes down to is he was the most efficient at squaring a club face at the moment of impact. So I had a lot of questions about how he was moving his body, moving his hands, moving his arms to get the face square. In this video that I'm showing you right now, this is me having that discussion with Mo. I was asking him, hey, are you, how are you squaring the face? How do you feel the club working in the swing? I was curious because I always had difficulty squaring the face. And there's a reason why I was having difficulty when I finally solved my club face movement, thanks to Mo and these videos. Once the club started moving better during my swing, it made it easier to square the face. What it really made it easier to do, however, was come in there with, with less deviated club face angles so it would match my path, which would straighten out my golf shots. So what I want to talk to you today about is how are, how are the hands and arms working to get the club face moving correctly. Now I will, I will say that there's a lot of ways to square a club face. If you have a closed face, you've got to change the path in a way but to have a square face. So the face squares, as long as the face is square, the ball has no idea whether the face is square or not. We all understand that. But as you know, the way I look at the golf swing is always, how do I take this mechanism, my arms, hands, body, club, how do I take this mechanism and how do I use it in a way, the most efficient way? So a lot of you will make comments on the channel and say, well, Todd, so-and-so does it this way and so-and-so does it this way and so-and-so does it this way. That's all great. And again, those guys on the tour are great players. So they have, they have found a way to match the path and the face of the club to square it up. Now I will say that a lot of them don't really hit it that straight. Now they'll, they, they control their spin rates and they control the direction their ball is going. Some guys play a fade, some guys play a draw. They're great players. So I'm, I'm not arguing that there's a lot of ways to square the face. But I always want you to consider when you're, when you're dealing with me in the single plane swing and watching this channel, is I'm, and I, I'm in pursuit and I'm showing you the most effective, most efficient way to move your body because this is a mechanism. And let me just describe a couple of things on, in that regard. You have rotation, this is rotation, right? This is supination, pronation, supination. And, and so you have ways the body can move. We have ranges of motion of the body. So, so we have to work within our ranges and how we set up the mechanism, how, pre grip pressure, um, grip angle, rotation, uh, having certain rotations on the club when we grip it, whether it's a weak or a strong rotation, all those things set us up to affect this face. So this is the discussion I'm having with you is how do we set this position to make it when I come down to impact, so when I set up here and I come down to impact, that this hand can effectively square that club face in an efficient manner. So. Those were the discussions I was having with Mo. I wanted to find out how, how the mechanism was working and how he's able to square the club face. Let's, talk, let's go through it here. So I'm not going to get into too much body motion, but there's really no way, if you watch me teach, there's no way I don't get into some body mechanics because it affects how the arm, arm and hand works. But let's just set up here for a minute and take a look. So if I'm setting up here at a dress, setting up this mechanism, the lead hand in a position that allows something to occur during the swing. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for when my hand is in a radial deviated position. So when I turn and my hand goes into radial deviation, so ulnar deviation would be this direction. Radial deviation is this direction. This is the radius bone, hand going this way. So if I go this way, 
or this way. That's the way the hand really is working. But what happens is when I turn and the hand goes into radial deviation, what I want to see is look what happened to the club face. It comes straight up and goes on to the plane. Now, when I come down, as I come down, look at the club face, it stays up. And then as I go into impact, as I go into impact and I'm turning, the hand goes into ulnar deviation and squares the face. So it goes, it goes turn, radial deviation, rotation, staying in radial deviation, internal rotation of the arm, and then ulnar deviation squares the face. That's how it works. You know, so Mo didn't know any of that stuff. If you look at the discussion I'm having with Mo, he didn't know what was going on with the face. I mean, well, I take that back. He knew what was going on with the face. He had no idea what was going on in the mechanism. My job has always been to translate the mechanism um, and how he did it because to me, he discovered the easiest way to do it. Why not d discuss how we get this mechanism to do it more efficiently? So here's what he would say about the club face. Mo would say the heel, the heel of the club, always leads the toe. Heel is always leading the toe. He always felt like this. You can see these pictures of Mo making this kind of, this kind of action here where he's kind of feeling like this. He shows this picture of this because he wants the, this back of this hand in an internal rotated position when you turn to lead. So it's a pulling. And this is what he would discuss is that it's a pulling motion. Yes, it's a pulling motion because you're, you're in an internally rotated position. You're rotated. And now you're going to be from that position, you're going to rotate. And so it's, your arm is in a pulling position. That's why these are the pullers of your body, right? If you, if you do workouts, this is the puller of your body. So, you know, a lot of people don't work on the pulling motion of their body, but they should because, because this is a pulling motion. So it starts at the hips and you rotate and you're pulling from here an internally rotated arm that is radial deviated. I almost sounded like a, somebody that knew something there, but I, I don't really know that much about this. I've just studied the mechanism. So, so here I'm internally rotated and then I'm pulling and you can look at this now. Here's what I want to discuss about how this hand is working because this is where you get into grip pressure because everybody's like, okay, where do I put pressure in my hands? And there is proper pressure in the hands but it's how we pull. Because if I take this club shaft and I want to pull on it, when I pull this arm, so uh, watch, watch when I pull this arm here. So when I pull this arm, you're not pulling from the thumb, right? You're not, that, that would be a push. If the hand went into ulnar deviated position, it's a push. So the only way you can pull is these last three fingers of the hand can, can pull the club. So I can actually take the thumb off and I can still pull the club. So we have to use the pullers of the arm and the pullers of the mechanism here. So we get to the top and we're pulling. So we're pulling the arm. Now, the thumb, if you look at the thumb position, it needs to be, there's a gap between the, the index finger and the thumb. That's because if I do this, if I put pressure down like this, so I get this hand in an angle, pressure down, which I, I recommend, it's, it's, it pulls on the front part of the, of the wrist and it changes the club face position. So let's kind of, let's summarize this a little bit for you. I want to create a club face that when I take the club back, it stays in a, in a heel leading position, planed face. So when I come down, I can go into a, a rotated ulnar deviated lead arm and it'll be square. And, and here's something that's interesting about it is that when I square the face, I can't go past square. Like I can't rotate it too closed. Why is that? Again, we have to go back to body position. It's because, because of the tilt of my body only allows a range of motion to square. So I've maxed out my, my arm rotation with my club. And so if I max out arm rotation, if I max out arm rotation, max it out, and the club face is in a good spot, it can only be square. This is where this is where Mo was feeling when I was discussing with him. He almost acted like, "What are you, an idiot?" Because it can only go there. Now, if you have a strong grip, so if I take this hand and I put it over here, and I have a strong grip, you see when I max out the hand, it can close. So I've got to hold the face off. So that now you add, you're asking for variation and deviation. You're asking for difficulty because your hand can go farther than you want it to go. Let's hit a shot here. 
And again, what I'm doing here is I'm just putting my hand in a rotated position, maxing out the rotation, making sure that I can pull on the hand. There's my position. And then you'll see me hit the shot and the only place the club face can really go is square. So it's really, it's really the only feeling I have is being able to square it up. That's because of the hand position. That's because I'm pulling on it. That's because when I finally rotate it and get it only get it to where it's owner deviated at impact this way, it can only go to square. I've talked about this like you're hitting a wall. So there's a wall here, you're hitting a wall. Notice you would not hit a wall like this. You would tilt and then hit a wall just like this. And that's how this hand is working. But you gotta make sure the hand position's correct. You gotta make sure when you're using your hands correctly that you can bring pull pull on this arm and then when you go on or deviate it, it squares. Now, second part of that is the right hand. This is why Mo would say the right hand is along for the ride. Why did he say that? Because you're not pulling on it. Because if you're doing this, you're not, you're not doing anything with this. Now, biomechanically, that's not what shows up when you do the data. What shows up in the data is, yes, from here, it's a pulling, and from here, it's a straightening. So that's that skipping the rock motion. So yes, this is along for the ride coming down. About right here, when you start straightening the arm, this gets active, but it's when. See, that's when people talk about, is it a pulling motion? Is it a hitting motion? Is it a, is it a pushing motion? Is it right-sided? Is it left-sided? That's not, that's, that's not the discussion because it's when during the swing. The swing is a sequence of events. So it's, a, it's not just a static motion. So it's a sequence of events going back this way, going through this way. So it depends when I'm back here, I'm pulling with the left arm. When I'm here, I'm extending the right arm. But, it's, but the body's in different positions when I'm in each of those things. So the body is in a different position here to pull and a different position here to extend. So it's where the body is, is when you feel the pushing and the extending and the throwing of the right arm. So it's not one or the other, it's both. And that's what I always tell people is the swing left-sided or right-sided, it's actually both-sided. So the takeaways today for you guys is really getting your hand position correct. So if you get your hand position correct, and now you look, you gotta check this face plane. You gotta check your face plane to make sure that, that when you're pulling on the club, the face is planed. So then when you get to the right spot, you can release it. And then when you get to your position here, it can only square. We wanna get that face not shutting down or not staying too open. Hope that helps you today. Thanks for joining me. That was a lot of deep information for you guys. If you want more to learn about the single point swing, click on the links in the description of this video. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I am so happy to help you learn the single point swing.